Hi teammates, this is Sean J. McCall, as usual, the host of the Eurostep, where um, tonight we have another great guest online for you. And for me, it's not about always having on guests that are EuroLeague players or EuroLeague coaches or big time agents or something like that. What's very important for me is that that we get angles and stories and journeys from from a, a vast, various, eclectic group of people. And that's what um, we're, we're doing tonight with this show as well. Um, more on that in a second. Before I start, um, make sure you click the comment section down below if you'd like to ask a question to my guest during the live. If you do it there, then everybody sees it. If you do it in the question mark with the speech bubble, only I see it. Um, and I check that regularly to make sure that there's some questions in there as well. Um, be patient, though, because I might not be able to get your question in right when you when you send it. Um, yeah. Let's let's get this start. Let, let's get this started right now. Um, Victor Ravenga is my guest for tonight, and like I said before, this is this show is all about being inclusive and and trying to find the stories that interest a lot of a, a big range, a wide range of people. And my guest for tonight is not a huge big time baller. He's not playing in the top league somewhere. He's not in in the bright lights of 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 first leagues, you know. Um, but he has a passion for basketball, and that's that's what drew me to him. And um, I like to find his journey because his is a little bit different because he's not an American. He's born in Madrid, born and raised in Madrid, and he's also gone abroad and decided to play up elsewhere other than his country. So um, I'd also like to hear his story from someone who's grown up in Europe, how they went about doing his 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 thing. So I'm gonna get him in right now. Uh, there we go. In the right. Five, four, three, three, two, one, bang. Raw. There we go. Yo. Hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? What's going on, Victor? Good. Yeah, I'm straight, man. You? Yeah, I'm doing all right. So. Um, before we get started, just to let everybody know, we follow each other on Instagram. Of course, we've never met before, something like that. And like I said before, you're not like the the EuroLeague player or something like that. But I've been following you for quite a while. And, and usually when I follow people, I watch their moves. I watch how they move first before I ask them if they'd like to come on. And um, I really, I was really impressed by the fact that, for one, you're pretty young and you, you're trying to, to play overseas. <laughs> um, mm -hmm and in different countries, even though you're a European. And um, it impressed me like your work ethic. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on. So you can explain your journey for the people out there. Maybe somebody, maybe some European can take your example and, and learn some of it from it as well. Yeah, okay. That's cool? Yeah, for sure. All right, so, uh, um, yeah, like we said, you are born and raised in Madrid. Yep. I mean, Spain is one of the better countries uh, in, in European basketball. To what level did you reach? Um, to what level did you play in before you decided to go uh, I played abroad? Until I was 19. So mm -hmm. I played until the under 22s. Mm -hmm. Then like this season, like I started preseason in Ireland and then I was off for a couple months. So I was training here with, with the team in fifth league. So that was all I got in Spain. Then when I was 19, uh, I started my my European journey. So I mean, for especially for a European, leaving home yeah. at nineteen is is not very common. It's not very common. Normally, nineteen year olds are still playing in their under to nineteen, under twenty twos. You know, they're still trying to become become pros and not really leaving to become a pro. Is which is what you did. How was it difficult for you to make the decision I'm to leave home? Like my, my objective my objective was to actually study in the United States, you know, mm -hmm. and was and play there. Mm -hmm. But that didn't work out. So I started looking for different options. Like I had always traveled a lot, so I felt like starting my basketball journey in different countries could be also an interesting an interesting thing to do. So that's what but I did. You I mean you were still technically in your under twenty twos. You could have you could have easily stayed home. And, you know, you got moms cooking, you got, yeah. you know, you're, it was a comfortable life for you, you know. Um, what goes in, in somebody's head when they're that young to think, okay, maybe it didn't work out going to the States, but I still want to go and see something else? I don't know, man, that it, 
different cultures and different countries have, has, have always caught my attention. Mm -hmm. So I feel like living and playing in a different country, it had always been my goal, you mm -hmm. know? So I feel like it was, it was the right time and the right opportunity. So I had the, the chance to do it and then just went to it. Man, you, I mean, everybody I know that plays overseas, they're trying to get to Spain. Yeah. It is hard as hell to get to get into Spain. <laughs> you were in Spain and you were getting out. That that's kind of a paradox. What, what what's going on there? But um, go, let's go back to when you decided to leave. Did you have an agent helping you, or did you do everything by yourself when no, you when you left? I did it first? all by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I found some contacts through Facebook groups and stuff, mm -hmm. and I had actually like a, a tryout set for for German Oberliga. But like three days before going to the tryout, I, I had an ankle sprain mm -hmm. while I was working out. So that option fell off. Like I was talking to the manager and everything and they told me like, yeah, okay, you can just wait till it heals. Mm -hmm. But then the situation with COVID in Germany got worse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I knew a player that sent me the contact of a team in Sweden. And I said, okay, I'm going to just try luck and see if it works out. I texted the manager and uh, I just went there. We're gonna to get to we're gonna to get to Sweden in a second, but let's go back to like like if you don't have an agent, if you're a 19 year old kid, and you don't have an agent, how hard is it for and a European at that? How hard is it for you to, to get yourself known or something like that? Because it's not like you have a, a large resume yeah. where where yeah. agents or, or teams can look at and say, okay, I see your stats. Um, how hard was it for you to start to reach out and for, and actually the most important question is. How did you start to reach out to them besides Facebook groups and stuff like that? I mean, I started following like a lot of players. Mm -hmm. So I just texted them like, what do you recommend me to do if I want to oh, wow. play in these countries? And, you know, I just took advice of them, which were in a position where I wanted to be. So I figured out that was the best option. Mm -hmm. And now let's talk about Sweden. So you, you did you have a tryout in Sweden? Did they want to look I mean, at you first, or did I, you I was mail? Did you mail them like a um, like a, a highlight tape before, or how did you how did you go about that? Yeah, yeah like I had a couple highlights done, so I just sent them to the team, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Okay, you can come here, and we you just bring all your stuff, but you'll be like in a tryout period." So right. I didn't sign a contract until after a week. Mm -hmm. Is there is there pressure for you as a nineteen year old kid, or or as a 19-year-old kid, are you totally oblivious to any kind of pressure when you're going somewhere the first time where you think, okay, I'm going on a tryout. Um, this is the first time I, I've left home. Do you feel that pressure as a 19-year-old kid or were you just totally like, I'm going, I'm going to do my thing and whatever happens, happens? Yeah, I mean, for sure there was pressure, but at the same time, it was like, this is what I love to do. So, And I've worked for it, so I'm going to just do what I can do and just see what happens. It is it was it weird for you to did you ever play on a team that had Americans on it when you were in Spain? No, no, you were in, no. The, in the under 19 or in under 22 system. Okay, I always find it really strange when when Europeans go to another European country because then basically they're like Americans that leave America to come overseas, yeah. right? They're they're a foreigner all of a sudden, even though you're in the same continent, you're a foreigner. Yeah. Um, what did you have to adjust to? being in Sweden. I know you weren't there that long. We'll talk about why later, but like the first, your first interaction when you first got it there, like what was your first thought? Like, wow, I'm not in Spain anymore. Like, this is crazy. I mean, first was sunlight because I was playing in Lulia, which was like the northest team in Europe. Mm -hmm. So maybe we had like <laughs> in November, we had maybe like three hours of sunlight a day. So that was, that was hard. <laughs> that was Especially so coming from Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> then I guess like just people with like personality it was way different than in Spain really yeah like How so? people here are more relaxed more chill really? and they're really they're more like introverts but it's also because of the weather like you cannot do a lot of plans <laughs> have a bad weather so like was there a moment where you were like besides this, the the lack of sun was there a moment when you first got out there where you were like, damn, I don't know if this was a good idea? Not really. Like, I was just so happy to be there, mm -hmm. like, living, living my dream. So I was just happy to be there. And as I said, like, I traveled a lot with my parents when I was younger. So I was able to see different cultures and different things. And I feel like I've always adjusted pretty well to different situations. Mm -hmm. 
what um what was your welcome to Sweden moment? Mm. I mean, first of all, I just got out of the plane and like 30 minutes after that, I was in the in the gym working out. Oh yeah, right off the plane? Yeah, yeah, right off the plane. Like if I got up there at 7.30, like workout was at 8 p.m. <laughs> they waste no time. It's, it's like that for Americans when they come over. They get off the yeah. plane, two hours later, they're sitting in the gym somewhere. So um, so you didn't you, you didn't play that long in, in, in Sweden. What division was that, by the way? It was Sweden. Third league. Okay, so you you um, didn't get to play a whole a full season because of COVID. Yeah, we just um, played three games. Three games, and so you went through like preseason and then three games and then everything shut down. Yeah, I was there for about two months and a half, three months. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Being like away from home and then going experiencing how COVID like unraveled all around yeah. the world. How was it for you being away from home during that? I'm mean, like we we. I had already experienced COVID mm. like strongly in Spain because mm. in 2020. Yeah. But it just hadn't got it to Sweden yet. And it was in that moment I was there with you in my season that it started off. Mm. So I had well, kind you, of lived that, that moment in Spain. So it was like. Right. Was so you were kind of like used to it. Yeah. Mm. Um, so you go back, you go back home. Mm. Um, what, what do you do in the time, in, during the time that, because the seasons were over, what did you do in between? the time when when you left to your next job? Yeah, I mean, season wasn't actually over. Like, they, they kept it on in standby mm. for, like, two months. Mm. Like, actually, like, the team wanted us to stay there. Mm. But, like, we said, like, we cannot even practice, so we, we, we headed home. And then I started uh, training with my former team here in Madrid, mm. you know, till the end of that season, and just start preparing for the next thing. So you were able to still get in the gym in Spain and, and work yeah. out and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't able to play because my license was in Sweden. Right. And right. I had to pay the transfer and everything, but I was at least able to train. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. Well, is that like the club that you like came up through, like as a youth, yeah. all the way through? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, before, before we move away from Spain, mm -hmm. you played youth basketball in, in Spain. Then you go to Sweden in the third league. What was the – was there a big difference in style of play? And for you, as far as being a foreigner, um, was was there any real big differences in style of play and, 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 that for, and pressure for that for you? Yeah, for me, like, like the, I think, like, basketball in Spain is way more technical, mm -hmm. way more focused mm -hmm. on plays and, like, more structured. And when mm -hmm. I got to Sweden, it was, like, a more physical, like, bigger guys and just run, run, run. Mm -hmm. Was it? Difficult for you to change to change your your the, what you have been used to your whole life? No, I don't really. No, I mean it was an adjustment, but so you um, at at that end after the whole COVID stuff goes goes down, what do you do next? You you got to try out yeah. in Germany. Is that right? So after you, okay, so the whole time you're gone, do you start writing the teams again, or how did you how did you progress? I started like writing teams when I was. When it was like around May, mm -hmm. 2021, mm -hmm. and basically I, I knew I wanted to play in Germany. So what I did was create an, an Excel document and just wrote down like every first regionality and second regionality to get team, mm -hmm. like in their context and everything from coaches or social media or whatever. And I just hit everyone out there. So I, I got a couple of tried offers mm -hmm. and I ended up going to one in, in Berlin during summer and it went pretty well. That's interesting that you, you said you, you made an Excel uh, table because um, actually I, I, I've done the same. Uh, and I tell my, my clients also, yeah. we, go through, we go through steps just like what you just said. And it's pretty interesting that you said that because that's <laughs> exactly what I do as well. Um, so you get, a, you get a bite from Germany. You go there for a tryout. Which team was that in the second region? Second yeah. region Liga? Second region Liga. It was Beast Alliance, more beats. Mm -hmm. Um, so for those of you that don't know, second regional Liga here in Germany is the equivalent of the fifth yeah. league. You got BBL, Pro A, Pro B, regional Liga 1, regional Liga 2. So it's basically the fifth league, but they still pay foreigners in the, in the, in the second and also in the sixth league. They, they also play foreigners. Yeah. One, of my, one of my guys, Zay, if he's still in here, he played here this year. Um, so, so did you notice 
or how did how, how did the whole process of the tryout go for you? I mean, being honest, I just contacted the team and he said, like, if you want to come, you can come by next week. <laughs> so, like, in the next three days, I was in the plane uh -huh. going to Germany. And I was I was there. I was trying out the team. I had also like an individual tryout, mm -hmm. and I was like, like practicing for like four days. Mm -hmm. And after that, like I talked with the manager and and everything, and they told me, okay, like we we need to make a decision. Like once you get home, we will text you and see and see what's up. And they they made me an offer, and it was an interesting offer, so I, I just decided to take it. Speaking of offers, so you're you're at that point twenty years old, right? I was twenty years. So what is it? 20 year old you don't have to name exact figures but what does a 20 year old earn in the sixth league of germany um as a foreigner that that you say okay i i'm i'm, I'm gonna stay here and i'm gonna try this I and mean, i was just asking for like enough for housing mm -hmm. and and food like that was mm -hmm. how my expensive cover was was a deal then i had some extra money because i was also working for the team as a social media manager and mm -hmm. graphic designer and all that because it's something i do like so um, it's good that you brought that up because I know you're studying journalism mm -hmm. and, and I, I know you, you actually I was going to ask this question later no I am going to ask it later, okay. I'll get into it later. But, um, but is it that's something that, that a lot of European players do they go they do online courses things like that in their downtime while they're playing so that they can they can further themselves which is different than how, how it is when Americans come over here because then they're pretty much full pros yeah. And and they don't really have so much time. Actually, they would have time, but it's not very usual that an American comes over here and is still going to school. Um, was it difficult for you to balance your your courses along with your playing as well? Not really. Cause like if you think about it, like maybe I train like as much as four hours a day, mm -hmm. like between the weight room and then team right. practice. Like there's a lot of free time that if you if you organize yourself correctly, I think it's really doable and manageable. How often do you guys practice in the, in the, in the second week now, uh, or that team? Yeah. We had three team practices, but then we had like individual practices three to two times in the mornings. Mm -hmm. So, but there were no days. Did you ever have days where you went, went double? No. no, no. So it was like either like indie indie practice, team practice, indie practice, team practice, kind of like, yeah. kind of like that. Okay. Um, what would you say was the level? Um, that you played in in the sixth league, did you find it challenging, or, or how was it for you as a player? I mean, it was it was a competitive level, I could say so. Yeah. But at the same time, I felt how I could really play there. Like it was a bad situation, really, because coach and I didn't have a good relationship, so I didn't have a lot of opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. But I feel pretty confident that I could really play there and be a good player in that league. I mean, that's 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 the interesting thing you said about the coach because if you get in a situation as a foreigner and the coach is not really on your side it can be rough yeah. and especially as a young european player i would imagine it's 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 pretty tough because you're competing against basically germans yeah. your age right so it could be that they have a little bit of an advantage as far as the coach knowing them and and, and maybe wanting to see a german play more or something like that that's politics yeah i mean i think it was more like internal problems with the team and management because actually mm -hmm. management brought me in mm -hmm. and coaching management didn't really get along well so that probably affected it yeah of course if, if, if the management goes over the coach's head and brings in a player that the coach didn't ne necessarily sign off on that that can happen anywhere whether you're yeah. a european or american or whatever that that always leads to problems um so after I know you didn't stay in Germany. You stayed almost till the end. Yeah. Um, how was your season going before you left? We'll, we'll talk about why you left in a minute. But how was your how was your season going before you left Berlin? I mean, it was it was going good. Like I was going to every practice and everything. And I just didn't have like that much playing time. Mm -hmm. so, like I felt for me, it was not really good to stay there. I had already lived experience. Like I had been there for like six, seven months. Mm -hmm. So I thought like it was it was enough because maybe there were games that I was. I was not even, even getting out of the bench, so mm. it was it was tough. I mean, when you are a, a, a foreign player, you kind of want or expect to play. Yeah, I mean, right. And, 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 and actually, 
there's no point yeah. in investing in a player exactly. and not having to play. Like. Exactly. I mean, actually, it, it doesn't matter what level you play on. Everybody wants to play, sure. right? Everybody wants their minutes. They want to develop. They want to, and especially as a young player, you want to develop. Um, that's got to be frustrating. And you're far away from home. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's different when you are a foreigner going to another, another country and, and you're not getting the minutes you're hoping for or you think that you should get. Was there a time when, when you, before you left that you thought um, it's not worth it? Yeah, maybe, maybe I should go probably, home or every, every every game I didn't play. Like I was feeling like that, but I just like could just stay stick to the grind and maybe next game you you play some more minutes. And what was the deciding factor? When did you reach that point? Like, nah, this is not working. Um, I think I need to leave. What happened? I mean, being honest, I was in a bad situation within. Ask Jeffrey. So I just said, like, I'm not willing to go through this alone here. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not playing. It's not worth it to stay here. So I said, like, I had already lived the experience. Right. Had been for six months. So I had experienced everything I could of Berlin. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was time for me to, to leave. How did you like Germany? I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Berlin is dope. Yeah. Berlin is dope. Um, so you go back home. Mm -hmm. season's, season's almost done. You go back home. What do you do when you're home? Do you go back to practice with your old team? What do you? How do you keep you know, yourself? I just felt I needed like a break from basketball. Mm -hmm. Like it was either that or I was gonna get burned out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like how I, you gonna get burned out at, at 20 years old, man? Nah, I, I mean mentally, like not not physically. Yeah, physically I was good, but I just felt like that. But like really, I couldn't keep my ass out of the gym, so I just kept practicing anyway. I just took like maybe a two week break going cup time shooting and all that. And then I was like, okay, I need to make the next move. Like my former team in Germany was organizing a, a tournament and it was an international tournament. So I was like, okay, let me just go there, grab some film because I, I barely had film from the season. Right. So I needed some film if I wanted to get in the next right. year. Was your family supportive of, first of all, you leaving home in the first place? And second of all, um, after you came back from Berlin, you know, sometimes when you when you go somewhere and it doesn't work out, your parents are like, "Ah, you should have stayed home." How how was your how was your family like in, involved in all that? No, at first they were a little skeptical when I first wanted to play outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense because I was nineteen. Right. They were like, "Why did you? Why don't you go to university here, study here, and play here?" But I just, you know, in the end, they they really became really supportive, mm -hmm. and they're really really important right now. It, I I mean, of course, when you, you, you don't want to see your, your, your kid go somewhere and when they're young and stuff like that, and especially in, in the basketball world that you were moving in is not the most professional. So I'm sure they were kind of kind of afraid that, that you would get taken advantage of or, or, or something. Yes, yeah, like because they, they, they didn't know about it. Right. Know, it was an unknown word for them. Mm -hmm. It was also for me, last bit also. <laughs> I mean, it's a learning experience, not just for you, but also for your family, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so now, so the season ends. Mm -hmm. Now we're coming into the time. Are you in France right now? No, no you're in Madrid right now. Yeah. So, in. so how did how did the contact come to the team in France where you were this season? No, first, first I was doing, doing oh, preseason with Ireland. Yeah, with Ireland, right? Okay. So what happened? How did you get to Ireland? Uh, I got I got like an agent for that gig. Mm -hmm. So he wrote. Did, you, did he come to you or did you go to him? No, I came. I go. I went to him. Like okay, wait, time. wait, wait. Because this is interesting for for what I do. So you went to an agent and talked to an agent. How did you get in contact with him? First of all, I had a I had a player that had played with him in the past, Chris Miller, and he mm -hmm. sent me like, okay, I know this guy. He might be able to help you out. And I just reached reached out to him and. So talks that's and, interesting. That's interesting because one of the first things when people ask me, oh, how do I get an agent? How do I get an agent? The, the easiest and quickest way for you to get an agent is what I call friend vouching. You have a friend that, that has an agent. You go to friend and say, friend, can you call your agent and, and put a good word in for me? And, and maybe something happens. Now, it's not always that the friend will 
actually do that, especially if they if they play the same position as you do, yes. because they don't want more competition. But you know, you know how it is. Sometimes it's it's that's the easiest way actually. So after you contact the agent, um, agent says, okay, I might have something for you. How did it go after that? Now I had a meeting with the team and and the agent mm -hmm. on Zoom. You know, it, it went well. They wanted some videos and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But they they made me an offer. And it was interesting. So I got there in August. To Ireland. August of twenty two. Yep, last summer. And um, so that's interesting that you that you talk to them on Zoom. That I mean, modern te technology is crazy. So you have an agent at this point. He pitches you to a team. It's the second league in 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 Ireland, right? He pitches you to a second league di division team, and you talk to them on Zoom to make sure you're a, a decent individual, right? Yeah. So kind of like a, inter a job interview. Yeah, basically. Right? <laughs> um, was that odd for you? Was was that difficult for you or kind of weird? Yeah, it was just weird, but I, I didn't know what it was about, so mm -hmm. I just like, okay, let's do it. And so you go to Ireland. Now I, I have I know someone who plays in Ireland as well. Ireland is also not the the hotbed of of European basketball. But um, what were your first impressions when you got there? I really felt like it, basketball wasn't that important. For mm -hmm. example, in Spain or in Germany, mm -hmm. like you could see they didn't invest that much in basketball right. there. But apart from there, like everyone was nice. And how so it was. How did your season go? Did you, did you get playing time? Were you satisfied with how the season went? Yeah, I mean, I was just doing preseason. Like, I was there for just a month. Oh, you were only there for yeah. a month. Oh, ah, and then the player got injured, and they had to make a choice. Uh -huh. Okay, so tell that story what happened. I, I, I know it, but yeah. um, I, I forgot to so I was, I was playing there. We had, like, two preseason games. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really play, like, my best basketball. Like, I know that. But to be honest, like, we had just – Practice with the full team for twice mm -hmm. or two times, so like you couldn't spread really much. I was playing point guard, like, and they wanted me all the time to advance the ball and at the same time score like crazy. Right. And, like we hadn't even practiced together a lot of times, so yeah. Then a, a teammate gets injured. It was a it was a four, and we just had like two big men in the team. So there was one left, and we had maybe like six seven guards. So they tell me like, okay, there's no point in having in, in having you here. We need to sign a four. So that's that's what they did. Mm -hmm. That's the business. Yeah, for sure. Like that's that's, that's the, that's the right. business that happened to me when I was in France. Um, it, if you're a foreign player and and things don't go your way, you you if you're one of the highest paid players like I was too, and something doesn't work out, it's gone. You're gone. So yeah. Our our big guy got hurt, and um, I'm a I'm a natural three, but I'm six eight, and um, and this skinny, <laughs> and um, our our big guy goes down, and um, they try to experiment with me playing all week inside, and then on the weekends for games playing my natural position, and it was crap, it was terrible, and um, then at some point they were like, look, we got to replace that big. Sorry, man. That's the, the business side of it. That's the business. And I, I understood it. I totally, uh, yeah, it was no no big deal. But that was a f my first time being fired, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's the only time I've I've ever been fired. And, um, I mean, I, I like two days later, I was in Portugal. But um, but that's the business of it. They, you, you can play as well as you want, as bad as you want, whatever. But if, if the things, the pieces don't fall into place, yeah. you're a foreigner. Not looking too good. Yeah, yeah I but, felt bad. Like it's, it was a business decision, so I wasn't like really mad at it. Like yeah. I knew I had, I did everything I could, so I had no regrets about it. So, mm -hmm. so you go back home. Then what happens? I was home. Like to be honest, I, I was thinking like I would get something like straight away. Uh -huh. Like I was really, really thinking like I was gonna get a nice, a nice deal. Like maybe in the next couple of weeks, but that didn't happen until. But because you still had that agent, right? So you thought he would find you yeah. something, basically. But nothing, nothing really popped out. <laughs> I was, I was like in, at home for two months. Mm -hmm. I had some opportunities here in Spain in fifth league. 
were in, in sixth league, but I just kept practicing and everything. And then, you know, the possibility of going to France like appeared. I just decided to give it a, give it a try and went for a try there. I mean, basically, you, you've been traveling since you were 19. You didn't have the greatest experience. You were in lower leagues. Um, why wouldn't you take a, a, a job in, in, in the sixth, fifth league in Spain? Because that's home. And then, you know, was, was the, the, your, your longing to play somewhere else greater than the, 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 the choice to stay home? Yeah, I mean, like, I felt like I could play higher because I, like, I wanted to play maybe fourth league in Spain, but, like, all rosters was full. Like, it was the start of the season. Right. Injuries hadn't even happened. Like, teams didn't want to make any right. improvements because it was, it was September. So, like, right. so I then I started practicing with a fifth league team. Like, they didn't even have a license for me. And then in the end, like, they, they managed to do something because they were waiting for a big man to – to step down from a fourth league to play with that team. Mm -hmm. So they had like a licensed spot. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't even warranty for a full season, but I just say like, okay, I'm gonna take it. It was like, right when my license was ready, uh, I got this opportunity in France. <laughs> it's, it's usually like that. You sign, uh, in, in my, in my uh, career as a pro, I don't know how many times I signed somewhere and then I got another offer that was probably bigger. <laughs> <laughs> like like three days later, always that always happens. So how did you how did you come? Because for a Spanish player going to Spain, that's not very usual. So how did you come in contact with a, with a French team? Or how did they come was, in contact? It was through you? a platform mm -hmm. where teams like just put out like their offerings. So like we're looking mm -hmm. for a player, so they were looking for a for a replacement because they had an injured player. Right. And I just talked to the coach through that platform. There and we had a phone call, and then I talked also with the manager and president. And then just went there for for a trial. Like within the next three days, I was I was there in France trying out for this team. Were they looking specifically for an EU player? Yeah, yeah, not not not, not like a foreigner foreigner, but they were looking for an EU player mm -hmm. to fill the roster spot. Yeah. Um, so you go there first time in France? No, I had already been there with like ten years ago. And um, you go to you go to France. You gotta be. You're 20 years old, 21 years old. Like you gotta be feeling some kind of pressure now. Like to be honest, like I was just like the worst that can happen is you get a, a paid trip to France. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's very true. That's a good attitude to have. Um, so you do well in the tryout. And what what league was that? Six. Six league. Um, so there's probably no other foreigners. No like Americans, right? Yeah, we had a we had a guy from Slovenia. Mm -hmm. uh, he had played across Europe, mm -hmm. like in Germany, Ireland, Ireland, sorry, uh, Italy. So, and he was there for like four years. He was also already established there, mm -hmm. but he was foreigner, because like in in those leagues, you were just allowed to have like two, right. two non-French players. Right. That, that's what I meant because I I, I knew that. So, um, what was the what was it like playing in in France for you? No, I really liked it. Like I saw, like they really invested a lot of money in basketball, mm -hmm. and it's like really professionalized. So I liked my experience there. Like I would definitely like to go there like next season. Were, were you were you playing enough minutes for yourself? Did you feel like like okay now I'm I'm able to show my yeah, yeah, yeah. what I can do? Yeah. Like it was it's a great season for me. Like sports wise, mm -hmm. I was really also having my confidence back because I was brought to be like a like in the in the starting five. Mm -hmm. So I was happy. My, my position there, I had a, a decent offer for the league I was playing. So, you know, I was, I was really being happy again playing basketball, which was mm -hmm. something I really needed and didn't mm -hmm. happen in the past seasons. So I was really, really happy with it. You, um, you, you mentioned that you wouldn't mind going back. Do you still have the same agent that you had when you went to Ireland? No. no. Really. Um, I mean, that's not unusual, but um, why did the partnership with the agent – Break apart. Yeah, basically, when I left, when I left Ireland, he was like, "Yeah, we're gonna find something, whatever." And then, like, communication like stopped, and we just basically talked about when I when I signed in in, in France. Mm -hmm. But we barely talked for like two months, mm -hmm. and then I was like, "Okay, it's, yeah. it's time to move on." Are you currently looking for a new agent? Yeah, I'm in something like that. Yeah, I'm in talks. I mean, I mean, you know, you know, like you're not going to be able to really make any real moves without an agent. No, for sure. You know, 
So, but so you've got good film from this yeah. year? So that always helps, yeah, yeah. right? Um, ever thought about like having a Spanish agent and, and really trying to do something in Spain? Yeah, I mean, still that's, kind of travel that's actually something, something I'm working on now. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking to an agent just today, really, actually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm open to, to everything. Like I would like to go back to France, as I said. Like the thing is in Spain, like lower leagues, there's not really a lot of investment. Mm -hmm. So to play in a similar level that I could be playing in France, and I would have to leave Madrid because there's a lot of competition and not mm -hmm. a lot of teams in that comp competitive level. Right. So I would rather just go to another country to, to a random small city in Spain. You know? Did your team in, in, in France, did they talk to you about possibly coming back next year or? I'm still in talk with that. I'm still talking about that. I mean, it's early. Yeah, it's yeah. early. They still having like the conversation with the French players. Mm. And possible new guys. They were, they were changing, changing the coach as well. So okay, it's a lot of things going on. There. Did they change the coach while you were there or after you left? No, I mean, our coach just communicated the decision like in the last. I think it was the it was two games till till the season was finished. Mm -hmm. But he stayed, he stood with us, like practicing mm -hmm. and everything until the next coach will come for next season. Okay. Um, what, if you can com compare the levels of all the countries you, that you've been to so, fo so far, you got Sweden, Sweden, what, what, third, third league in Sweden? Yeah. Third league in Sweden, you got, um, then you went to, you came to Berlin. Right, sixth league, fifth, sixth, fifth league in fifth league in Germany. Then you go to. After that, you went to Ireland. Yeah. Ireland second league, weren't there that long, but still. And then we, we talk about France, sixth league. Through all those, all those, those places you've been, what do you think was the 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 main difference between the countries that you've played in so far? You mean basketball wise? Or? Yeah, basketball wise. Basketball. I feel like French and German basketball was more like Spanish basketball, mm -hmm. more like technical, focused on place. Mm -hmm. But it was also I felt like more physical than in Spain, for example, mm -hmm. like in both countries in Germany and France. Mm -hmm. I mean, going away from home at nineteen to go to play in another country is not a, the usual thing or the usual way to go. Yeah. Um, the, the, the path that you chose. Looking back on it, do you regret anything? No, not really. I mean, just Good. that's just the way it happened. Mm -hmm. It kind of worked out for me. I'm I'm happy with where I'm at right now. You know, and being able to make a living off basketball, or at least surviving off basketball, mm -hmm. is something I I will always be grateful for. Let's let's go a little bit away from basketball, yeah. the the basketball side of it. So you, like we said before, you're 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 studying journalism, yeah. right? What's your dream job? You get your degree. Um, you can choose any job you want in journalism. What's your dream job? I would get just something like building a communication agency. Mm -hmm. Just doing like maybe advertising or videos for people or graphic design. I mean, that's something of, I'm more or less doing right now mm -hmm. in, a minor, in a minor scale. Mm -hmm. Like I'm working as a quote unquote freelance for different mm -hmm. projects and I've worked for fashion brands, for some your restaurants, as a photographer, as a videographer. So that's something I enjoy doing. Apart from that, and one of the places that you that you've established yourself is We Evolve. Yep. And um, for those of you that don't know, We Evolve is is a Joy Davis runs that, and she's one of my go tos, and um, very much an athlete advocacy group that does a lot of good work behind the scenes to try to improve improve the the lifestyles, the benefits of athletes overseas, and um, and I'm really tight with them. So, what do you do? Like, like so you you kind of do like graphic design for 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 them and and things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in charge them? mostly of social media. Mm -hmm. I'm doing like posts, like captions, and so you know, is it. So is it you that I when I write to Jory, do you get do you get those mails first or does Jory get? Now, all, all of us get the, well. Jerry and I get them, and also Hian, which is also on the team. Uh, okay, um, that's funny because actually I hit Jory up, and she didn't get back to me. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to curse her out. Um, well, I, I would tell her. her, 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 her I'm having a meeting. 
I'm meeting Barcelona, so I will tell her tomorrow. Yeah, you tell her tomorrow that, that, that I'm mad at her because she didn't get back to me because I wrote her um, a couple days ago, actually, because I wanted, I wanted her to give me some kind of um, little background to you because in, in preparation for our, our interview. And she never got back to me. So tell Joy she, she, uh, she's on my shit list right now. She don't have to work to get off my shit list. Um, and um, it's, it's one thing to be on a big stage, earn a lot of money playing basketball. But when you're not on such a big stage yet, um, you're still going to school. You're doing some, some stuff on the side as far as graphic design goes you, and, and things like that. How, do you, how are you able to, like, keep everything together? It takes a lot of organization for sure. Um, but how are you able to kind of focus on, on everything that you have going? I mean, everything is something I really like doing. Mm -hmm. Like basketball and then graphic design is something I really always dreamed about working as. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just happy to be able to do that and then as I said like studying doesn't really take a lot of time away from the rest of stuff because I can organize how I want mm -hmm. so it's online and everything so I have to do a lot of projects and everything but you know I just have a good organization have have two times in mind and... mm -hmm. how is it how is it for your this is a personal question but how how is it for your relationship status being moving around and stuff you got a girlfriend back home in no. in, in, no. in madrid no. so are you married to the game yeah. that's what now yeah. <laughs> good you're young you still got time <laughs> but but i mean that's a, a, a something that all athletes face when they when they move away from home like how do you how do you keep relationships going whether it be with a girlfriend boyfriend whether it be with your family whether it be with you know friends has it been difficult for you to keep keep the connection to your family and friends um while you've been traveling as well i mean right now is a, a time of it's very easy to get in contact yeah. with people and keep contact with people but how is it for you especially yeah i mean as you said like technology is really allowing us to connect like daily to whoever we want mm -hmm. but yeah for me like it has probably been like the hardest part of being playing abroad like being away from family and, and friendship for for a long period you know, especially in the times that things weren't going that well. Mm -hmm. But I think I've, I've adapted to those situations, like, easily. Right. What is it like, like, when times are not going that, that well for you while you're playing somewhere else other than home? Um, this is something that a lot, of, a lot of athletes have when they travel from America over, overseas. Um, those times when, when it's like, yo, I don't even know if I should be doing this, you know? Um, just like the mental side of it. How do you keep yourself going in those times when it's, when it's a little bit tough? I would just say it's a passion for basketball, like, mm -hmm. you know, like thinking of better days are coming, you know, focusing on the work I got to do now to, to have better success in the future. Mm -hmm. And of course, also rely on, on my close circle of friends and family. You know, that's really important to have that support system. You are what, 22 now? Yeah. What's your, what's your, in basketball terms, what is your desire what do you want to what do you want to reach in this game and how long do you want to keep playing to be honest i would like to keep playing as long as i can long so as the I wheels can. fall off yeah. <laughs> and then like i would like to be within the next four or five years maybe playing in a second or third league in a, in a top country mm -hmm. it being like spain or france or germany or italy mm -hmm. so yeah that's my that's pretty cool those, those are logical steps to, to take and not just saying, okay, I want to be in two years. I want to be in first league in Spain. No, sure. That's, a, that's a, a logical way that you're you're going about it. Um, do you have any advice for young Europeans that also might be thinking about making the transition of leaving their home country, even though they're young, to go to another European country? Yeah, I mean, my main advice would be just to to be ready, like physically and mentally. Because you were faced with a lot of situations you're not prepared for, mm -hmm. and you get to have that adaptability to be able to really survive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was that would be basically it. Like just be ready because things are not gonna go the thing the way you're gonna you sorry <laughs> things are not gonna go the the way you think, not for the good, not for the bad. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna be different. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, just stay physically ready because you never know when these opportunities may come. Like as I said, like most of the trials I had, 
I had like three days to, to leave the country. Mm -hmm. So you, you cannot get physically ready in that time. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? Yeah. Um, okay, we're almost, we're almost through. I got five, five things. So you, I'm gonna say a phrase or a word or whatever. Yeah. And you tell me the first thing that pops in your head, okay? Strangest song on your game day playlist. What? The strangest song on your game day playlist. What nobody would think would be on your game day playlist. Maybe some random pop Spanish girly music. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have like game day playlist. I just go with what I'm feeling that day. Okay. Um, so from the, from three of the countries you've played, Sweden, Ireland, France. You know the game, um, Mary Ki Kiss, Mary Kill. You know that game? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so you got you got Sweden, Ireland, and France. Those three countries. You have to kiss one, you have to marry one, and you have to kill one. Okay, I think I'll marry France. Okay. Kiss Sweden and kill Ireland. Ireland is gone. Yeah. Okay. Ireland is wiped off the face of the earth. Um, this is just a phrase. Tell me the first thing that pops in your head. Love of the game. Basketball. Yeah. Um, shit talking. Oh, I gotta say something. Uh, I don't know. Like I understand it. At the same time, like being Spanish and playing in outside countries, people don't know Spanish. So I just curse in Spanish. Are 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 you a, are you a big shit talker? No, nah, not really. I'm, not really. I'm just focused on my games, trying not to get distracted by it. Like I don't I don't get into those games. Have has anybody ever tried to rattle you outside of Spain? So now you are a foreigner somewhere else. Has anybody ever really tried to rattle you and talk shit to you, like, since you've been traveling? Yeah, but I was like, came in like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I could talk to you back in Spanish, you wouldn't understand. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the leagues that you've played so far, who was the best player that you faced? That's a difficult question. Yes, I know. I, I would probably say, kind of say in practice, doesn't matter. The, the best, the best player that you played against. In practice, it would be Leon Tronjak, who was okay. my teammate in, in France this season. Okay. So that's a name we're gonna have to keep out, keep a watch out for, right? Yeah. Okay. So man, I'm you. I'm good, man. You 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 hit the shot, the buzzer. You answered all my questions really well, and I I hope my hope by having you on is is to show that to young Europeans that they're able to leave home. Yeah. You know that. They should, they should try, you know, and don't just be considered the young German or the young Swedish guy. And and if you want to try to go somewhere that you, you it's not going to be easy. No, for sure. But your your experience shows it's possible. You're going to have to to suck it up. But hey, if that's what you want to do, then you gotta you gotta put everything into it. Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's it's why I, yeah, I really recommend to to any player just thinking about it, like just take that step, like. Thing might go right, thing might go wrong, but like the worst. I mean, thing, the thing is, you can always go back home. Yeah, what I was gonna say, like the worst part is, like you, you'll get back home so like Yeah, so I, I really appreciate you coming on, man, and and, and telling your story and, and and giving some good, good points to maybe helping the one or the other European player because I think it's important not just to see it from a from you know the Euro step coming from America over yeah. here, but also that it's that there are young. Spanish guys, young German guys, young Swedish guys, they go elsewhere um, that leave their home countries and, and they're basically also doing the Euro step. So um, that's really why I'm, I'm really happy that you came on and told your story. I wish you the best of luck, man. I hope I hope um, if you don't end up back in France this year that you end up somewhere that, that you feel comfortable with, wherever that might be. I wish you luck looking for an agent because you and I both know that's not always the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm here if you... You need something, man. Yeah, my guy. Sure, so, I th thank you very much for having me, man. It's, it's been a pleasure. I felt really comfortable, and it's it's really been a nice time, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So, get on up out of here. I'm gonna say goodbye to the good people that are still watching, right. and uh, we'll talk yeah. anyway. All right, man. Later. Thank you, man. Have a nice evening. So, teammates, definitely a different perspective. What I really, really wanted to have. Um, 
you know, I, I've also worked with, with youth players here in Germany, and I know that it's from time to time they get frustrated because they always get looked at as, as the young German. They, the, the Germans don't want to, the German teams don't want to pay the young Germans what they're used to, so they go elsewhere to get respect, you know, and um, looked at as a, as a foreigner, not so much as a young kid. Um, it's not easy, like he said. He's been through it, you know, and um, it's, it's not always going to be easy, but it's worth it, not only for the basketball side, but for your, your life and your, you know, your, your development as a human being. You know, take the chance. Do something, do something rash, you know, when you're young. <laughs> but like we said before, you can always go back home. So, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to go upstairs and watch some EuroLeague. And, um, yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's healthy. We'll be back, or I'll be back next week with a new guest. And um, yeah, I hope everybody's good. And you, I'll see you again next week. We'll head out.